what I end up with is if I draw my first quadrant unit circle I end up with five extremely important points one is the point one comma zero again I know this is getting old I apologize but I'm gonna keep writing it remember it is the unit circle and if I've got points on the unit circle I've got sines cosines and tangents I end up with the point root 3 over 2 comma 1 half I end up with the point oops come on don't be shy root 2 over 2 comma root 2 over 2 I end up with the point 1 half comma root 3 over 2 and I end up with the point 0, 1. Now, why are those points important? Because, I'll show you, I'm going to change colors for all these guys. Start with this. I know that that point corresponds, whoa, that that point corresponds to theta equals pi 6. I know that this point, let's see if I can draw this one a little better, that this point corresponds to theta equals pi fourths. I know that this point corresponds oops, go away. I know that this point corresponds to theta equals pi thirds. I know that this point corresponds up here right there you can see it to theta equals pi halves and let's not forget our our not angle as it were what's a good one here let's go with red this point right here corresponds to theta equals zero if I have the angle measure that produces the point on the unit circle I have sine cosine tangent cosecant secant and cotangent now if that doesn't make you happy you have no mathematical soul just kidding. All right, there's one last thing that I want to cover before we end this little segment. And it has to do, the, inevitably the question always comes up, Ripley, what happens if I'm not on the unit circle? And that, I think that's a very valid question. So let's address that real quick. If I'm not on the unit circle, if I'm on the unit circle, everything's gorgeous because I know that sine equals y, excuse me, sine of theta equals y, cos of theta equals x, tangent of theta equals y over x, and I can get the other ones by taking the reciprocal. However, what if I'm not on the unit circle? Well, let's just play with the first quadrant because, I, again, I, think I want you to get real used to playing ball with this first quadrant. Let's say that I build a quarter of a circle of radius r. Now instead of, it's still centered at the origin, but I'm going to build it so that x squared plus y squared equals r squared. Remember that's the equation of a circle with that's centered at the origin who has a radius of r. Now hopefully you will see, hopefully you will see that I can, assuming that r is larger, although it does not matter, than 1, but I'm going to build this little unit circle of, ooh, I didn't give myself enough room, did I? That's all right, I'll fight through it. x squared plus y squared equals 1. Okay? Now, I'm going to pick a point on this here unit circle, and I'm going to call x comma y. And I'm going to draw an angle through that point. And then I'm going to keep right on going, and I'm going to pick a new point out here on my, on my circle of radius r and I'm gonna call that for lack of a better term that's not a one that's a prime so this is gonna be x prime and y prime okay now hopefully you can see again from your geometric adventures that what I'm gonna have here is this little distance right here is gonna be x and this little distance right here is gonna be y let's change colors it'll make it easier to see this big distance right here is going to be x prime and this big distance right here is going to be y prime. Now this little distance, let me go back to my black, I forgot to label my radius, this little distance right here is r. So I've got x, I've got y, and I've got r. Ooh, I'm sorry, strike that, I apologize. 
not crazy. It is on the unit circle, Ripley, so you should know that that radius is 1. And then, if I grab a little blue, I know that the big distance is R. Okay? Now, hopefully, again, from your geometry, you can see that these two triangles form similar triangles. Remember that? So if I'm talking about if I'm talking about this angle right here, I'm going to make it red so we can see it nice and pretty. This angle right here is theta. Let's see what happens. I know for sure that the sine of theta is equal to y, right? But don't I also know that by similar triangles, I know that y is to 1 as y prime is to r. So let's write that up. I know that y is to 1 as y prime is to r. Oh, hey, wait. y divided by 1 is just y. So y equals y prime divided by r. Guess what? On a non-unit circle, sine theta can be written as y prime, that's this guy right here, divided by its radius. Now, look at, I can do exactly the same thing with cosine. Watch. Cosine of theta is equal to, well, what do we know? It's x. But if I do a little proportion, I know that x is to the hypotenuse, or 1, as the big x prime is to r. Well, again, x equals x prime over r. Guess what? On a non-unit circle, x prime is r. Now, this remember, this x prime, y prime is just a point. It's just a regular old point. So we don't have anything to be afraid of. All right, now, <clears throat> here's where it gets fun. Don't I know that tangent of theta is equal to, well, what was it? It was y over x. Well, on a non-unit circle, isn't Remember, y equals y prime over r. That's what y equals. So y prime over r divided by, again, x equals x prime over r. So I get x prime over r. Goodbye to my r's. And guess what? y prime over x prime. Just like you would probably imagine. So let's do just a real quick example, all right? Let's say that I have the point, I don't know, I have some point 4, comma, negative, no, let's make it simpler than that. Let's make it 4, comma, 3. If I have the point 4, comma, 3, all right, and I've got an angle in standard position that passes through that point. All right, now, I'm going to draw just a quick little sketch to kind of see what that does. It's not going to be horrifically accurate, but bear with me. Let's say that 4, 3 is, is somewhere out here. Again, my scale is going to be a little crazy, right? All right. Now, I know that there is a circle. This circle is going to be a train wreck, but just bear with me. I know that there is a circle that passes through that point, as there is a circle that passes through every point and, and has a center at the origin on the coordinate plane. And therefore, there is a theta measure right there. Now, let's see if we can figure out how to, how to find, I'm going to change colors real quick, how to find the sine, the cos, and the tangent. Well, the first thing that we want to be able to do is we want to figure out what the hypotenuse is, or the radius is. I keep saying hypotenuse, I apologize for that. I want to figure out what this radius is, because look at my formulas. My formulas have radii in them, except for tangent, which is kind of nice. Well, let's think about that. Have a quick look-see. I know this distance is 4, and this distance is 3, clearly not drawn to scale. By Pythagoras, I can surmise that that radius is 5. This is actually, strangely enough, x squared plus y squared equals 25. That's the circle that this point lives on. Now, this is the coolest part. Watch how simple. I know that sine of theta. Notice, I don't even know what theta is. I have no idea what theta is. But I know based on the fact that it passes through this point, I know what its value is. I know that the sine of theta is y over r, which happens to be 3 over 5. I know that the cosine of theta is x over r, 
right? The x, I, I wrote them as x primes over here, but now I've written this as x squared plus y squared. That was just to show you that this was a different point from the xy that we used. I do have to make mention of that. I know that x over r in this case is 4 over 5. And then I know that the tangent of theta is from over here, y over x, which is 3 fifths over 4 fifths, fives cancel, and I end up with 3 fourths. Isn't that cool? And that's true for any point, that it, even the points that aren't necessarily on the unit circle. All you have to do is determine what the radius of the circle is that passes through that point, and you're off to the races. I hope this was helpful. I'll see you tomorrow in class, and we'll do some problems. In the next segment, we're actually going to do quite a few practice problems as well, and I'm going to give you some hints um, in terms of, of um, how to solve values of theta that are kind of all over the board. All right, have a good day.